Good morning. Welcome back to Morning Live. Thank you so much for choosing us on this Monday morning. Let's take a look at your sports in this hour. Now, the quarterfinals of the Africa Cup of Nations have concluded. And now we look forward to the midweek action, which will see the semifinals lock horns on Wednesday as well as Thursday. To help us dissect these matters, we have our man on the ground, Tabi Sojobes Tole, who is joining us all the way from Yawunde in Cameroon. Good morning, Jobe, and welcome to Sports on Morning Live. Good morning, Vic. Good morning to our viewers and channel, or SABC News Channel 404. Now, Tabi, so Cameroon, they just kept marching on in this tournament at the expense of debutantes Gambia, who really have had a fairy tale run in this year's tournament. Now, tell us about the importance of a host nation staying in a tournament as long as possible. And let's also talk about Gambia's performance in this tournament. Look, it's, it's, it, we arrived uh, yesterday with myself and a colleague, Arane Sandu, and the mood and the buzz in as far as the Cameroonians and uh, their uptake on the competition, it showed from our flight all the way from Johannesburg to Ethiopia, Ethiopia to uh, du uh, Douala, then coming back to Yaoundé where the semi-final will be held in particular with Cameroon. Um, look, the, moves, the mood is a bit of a buzz. The colleagues are in the media space as well, both locally and internationally, are actually at the hotel that we are staying. Everyone's looking forward to the, 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 the biggest, I think we're calling it already the final before the final with regards to Cameroon facing Egypt in that semi-final. We saw yesterday how Egypt performed. It was a touch-and-go situation. That match, a huge match as well as far as the rivalry against Algeria. So as it stands, I think this town, Yaoundé, will come to a standstill for the next couple of days when those, until those semi-finals are held. But it's been an interesting tournament v, with regards now to the likes of Gambia. When, we, when AFCON started, we always thought the cream of the crop of the competition would come through. We saw the smaller nations you know, holding their own and as far as taking on the big boys, the likes of your Egypt, the likes of your Cameroonians, the likes of your Senegal, the likes of Burkina Faso. I think we saw countries like uh, Ghana, uh, uh, Equatorial Guinea, who we saw yesterday, uh, pulling out all the stops in as far as taking it to the big boys and big match temperament. But it's been the teams that have been quietly doing their business behind the scenes. I think for me, Egypt would be possibly the dark horse of this tournament. All they've done is won one no, they have close shaves there and there, but as I was saying, the big one to look forward to is particular with Cameroon. I think when that final happens, and unfortunately, one has to lose between the two teams. But we're hoping that Cameroon does stay in it. And as far as the question is concerned, you want the host nation to go in as far as possible in competitions like this. Because then you want the buy-in of the local populace. You want the buy-in of, well, the, 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 the atmosphere that comes around with big tournaments such as these. The? Certainly. And Tabi, so you have touched on Cameroon and how um, a lot of people want them to go all the way. We saw how lucky they got with Comoros in that one encounter. But let's talk about Egypt. Mm. And you've said they haven't had the greatest of starts to this tournament, but they've awoken from their slumber. Do you actually think that as the most successful nation in the AFCON so far, they have what it takes to win against the host nations and make it into that final? Whew. That's a tough one. You're putting me in the spot here because now I have to choose. <laughs> I think Egypt have the pedigree. I mean, we know Carlos Kira, she coached my final final at one stage there in South Africa. He's assistant coach, he's Roger Desai, he also played for South Africa, coached in South Africa, and is now the assistant coach to Carlos Kira here in the Egyptian team. I think the fight we saw yesterday with the likes of Egypt against, in that match against uh, Algeria, uh, Algeria, going down a goal, I think in the fourth minute of the match via penalty and clawing their way back. When push came to shove, the likes of Mo Salah, who we've wanted to see, I mean, everyone speaks of Mo Salah in, in a faction in as far as uh, African content is concerned. When you want to see the likes of him come to the party, and he did yesterday with that goal, that equalizing goal that literally then brought the Egyptians back into the match. In fact, when we arrived here in Yaoundé, we were met up with Egyptian fans at the airport when we were trying to get SIM cards ourselves to get connected for you guys at home. We spent more than half an hour, in fact, close to an hour or so, waiting for Egyptian fans who were also arriving. So they've got a huge contingent following the team around the, 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 the Africa Cup of Nations. Can Egypt pull it off against the likes of Cameroon? It's very likely. I mean, it's a tough one. Uh, when it comes to semifinals, it's a coin toss, isn't it? Because anyone can, on any given day, pull off uh, you know, a sucker punch, a sucker attack, score one goal, and they win 1 0. Cameroon, ago, uh, although they've been resilient, They've had good games so far. They're scoring well. Um, 
It's tough. It's, it's anyone's game. I mean, I'd, I'd hate to make a prediction. Yes, I'd like to see Cameroon stay. They are the host country. I'd like to see them stay and continue the competition. It's going to be a tough one to, 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 to call. I think no pundit wants to call this one. But that's what I'm saying. This is going to be the final before the final. Everyone's looking forward to it. I certainly am. And now on Wednesday, it's the first semi-final, Burkina Faso going up against Senegal. Now, Senegal, we've seen them with a galaxy of stars. Um, they're a team that seem to have good momentum going into this mm. championship round. They stars such as uh, Sadio Mane, Edouard Mendy. Do they have what it takes to go all the way? That was a good game. I mean, if you remember what happened last night as well, Burkina Faso against Equatorial Guinea. Um, I think the first half was touch and go, and as far as Burkina Faso and Equatorial Guinea was, was concerned, you thought Equatorial Guinea was always in that match. And actually, I thought that if Equatorial Guinea had equalized, which they did, they could actually steal this one 2 3 1, and as far as the scoreline is concerned. But then, once again, it's the big boys then that came to the party, isn't it? The likes of the, uh, you just mentioned. 3 1, the final score. Equatorial Guinea uh, out of the competition. So Senegal are now playing uh, Burkina Faso in the next, um, in the other semi final. That's going to be a big one isn't, uh, as well. Again, these are the teams that you are expecting to make it through to the next round of competition. But when it comes to this match, I think this one, this one might be the tightest of the two semi finals when you speak about Burkina Faso and Senegal. Yes, they've had good runs, but. The fact that they went down early in some of their matches and they had to dig deep, uh, the Senegal of course, will they be on the back foot? Because the nerves didn't come to play when it comes to the big matches, isn't it? So mm -hmm. it's one of those things, if somebody scores a quick goal in the semi-final, then they don't want to make any mistakes, they keep it tight to the back, you might find it late or difficult to penetrate and get an equalizer and get a, a winning goal. If you look at the run of Senegal and Burkina Faso, yes, they've had clean runs, but they've dropped points or they've dropped matches here and there. I think all the, the top four exception of Cameroon, none of them have actually had a clean run to this stage of competition. So even that one, I think it's going to be tight to call. And come Wednesday, I think we'll get a clearer reflection. I think in the next two, three days or so, Renéo and myself will be going to some of the training sessions. We'll get updates on what the teams look like. And of course, the 13th man or the 12th man in the stands plays a huge role in terms of support. So it'll be interesting to see where the fans support when it comes to Senegal and Burkina Faso in Cameroon. Tabi, so something I do want to touch on in terms of the AFCON is the officiating. We know that in the beginning stages, there was quite a lot of frustration. We've also seen a tournament where there's been a lot of red cards being given out, a lot of penalties being given out. What are the expectations when it comes to these semifinals? And of course, the use of VAR, which um, at some point at this tournament has been, um, for lack of a better word, abused. <laughs> we saw yesterday, whilst watching the, the, the Egypt game, uh, South African ref uh, Victor Gomes. And before the match started, we were actually conversing about, I wonder how many cars will be matched out by him, because you know the kind of strict referee he is. Overall, it's, it's tough calling a, a, a match. It's tough trying to decide whether the referees are, are competent or not. We know that some of the teams have been let down by VAR, what we thought would be, would be the equaliser, the great equaliser as far as the mm. competition is concerned. In fact, Egypt themselves, when they, in, I think it was a match uh, against Mali, if I'm, if, I'm, if, if I'm correct, there was a call against the opposition that Egypt had and a, a, a legitimate goal that was ruled out by VAR. So the question is, ball has been up in the air and as far as that, that use of the uh, um, equipment is concerned. So far, it seems that People have accepted it. I mean, you even see the refs, they, they don't want anyone to remonstrate after a VAR call is made. We saw the penalty in that match against Algeria yesterday was called by VAR. So, what, is it a good uptake for the sport? The, the, the purists of the sport will tell you, no, it's not. It takes away so much from the game with regards to you want to see you know, uh, play continue. It's almost like cricket V, isn't it? We saw now with South Africa and India the likes of uh, uh, Hawkeye. It was questioned by the Indians. We know that India have never liked Hawkeye or the use of their equipment in the, in, in, overall. So I think the CAF presidency or the CAF uh, Confederation of African Football, they'll be happy with the use of VAR. I think this is probably one of the biggest tournaments that we've seen. It's on the continent being used. We know in South Africa, VAR has been touted to be, well, to, go, to, to be brought in. It is expensive, so hopefully I can't, I can't really put my finger on it whether to now to, 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 to say it's worked perfectly for now. I think when we have the, 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 the reports after the tournament, I think it would be easier to make a decision. But I think overall, 
it's easier for the players and ourselves, the fans, the viewers, to accept a VAR call. You might not agree on how on why the call is made, but when it's done, it puts an end to the remonstration. But we did see the needle yesterday on the match that Egypt uh, and, and Algeria game. Very, you know, Haji Baji, I think I'm surprised that no red cards were given out in that particular match because that one yeah. was a bit hot under the collar. So overall, I think people are, are expecting it. They, they enjoy it. It's brought a new dimension, particularly in Africa. We all see it's been used in Europe. So on the mm -hmm. continent, it's a new dimension. There is a bit of, you know, uh, when you're watching, waiting for that call to be made, glued to the screen. I mean, at the hotel when you arrived, the Egypt game had just started. So we were glued to the screen, wanting to see whether, how it's going to be called the guy that helped us bring our bags yeah. and said, no, that's a dive, sir. And I said, look, that's going to be a penalty. So again, you, you, you'll never all agree Tabi, on exactly I'm how sorry, I'm going to have to interject there things. quickly. I'm sorry, Jobe, just on that Egypt-Morocco game that you were mentioning. But now, just as we wrap up quickly, we have <laughs> run out of time. Let's talk about that stampede quickly and whether that official report in terms of that incident in that game between Cameroon and yeah. Comoros um, has come out yet. Look, the report has come out. We do know that the match that the, 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 uh, where the stampede happened, uh, that stadium was put on, on, on ice. Um, CAF saying that they must make investigations, particularly, in fact, they must tighten up uh, strict measures and fire safety is concerned. And we thought that was going to happen, uh, and thank you for reminding me, it wasn't uh, Egypt, Algeria, but rather Egypt, uh, Morocco. Uh, as far as the devil is concerned, the police for that 12 years. Um, that call did come in. Uh, we know that that match has been moved. So now all matches are going to be at the same way the Morocco Egypt match will play, or well, one in the semis anyway. The finding, no final report has come out, but we know that uh, Patrice Matipa, president of CAF, is taking it uh, uh, you know, quite seriously. Uh, we expect something to come out again on Tuesday. So far, the only thing that CAF had really said, look, stop all matches going to that particular stadium because of the issue of uh, safety concerns and because again with Cameroon making it this far it'll be interesting to see what uh, extra measures are put up uh, v coming to the match that Egypt uh, not Egypt rather Cameroon, Cameroon will be uh, against the, the Egypt, Egypt match what uh, how strict they're going to be in particular for their safety concerns because as it stands about 80 percent of uh, fans expected to come to stadiums but we know that in the previous match Cameroon played there were more than 80 percent of capacity going to stadium. Thank you so much, Tabiso, for your time. We will, of course, be catching up with Tabiso Jobes Tole throughout the AFCON as we, of course, near the final and business end of the tournament.